Welcome back to my channel. What we have today is a real quick review of a Summer USA clarinet. This was a submission from someone by email, trying to find out what vintage year their clarinet is, what model it is, and stuff like that. And Summer USA clarinets are really very recognizable just by the way they're built, really. So if you find this information useful, don't forget to give a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share. But we'll get right on to it, looking at some pictures real quickly some very easy identifiable items about Selmer USA clarinets. So what we have here real quickly is pictures sent to me, I'm trying to figure out what type of clarinet this is. So this is of course a resonite plastic clarinet. This was actually a Bundy clarinet and we'll, we'll see why in a minute. Um, and you'll see, I'll identify these things, why it's really a student level clarinet. And Selmer USA started making the molded plastic clarinets as a Bundy model back in 1948. Per I read that on history page on the Selmer Khan website, actually. And based upon the serial number of this one, which um, it was fairly low, I, I was guessing, you know, maybe mid 1950s, considering it started in 1948. Mouthpiece was a golden tone. But let's take a look here. Let's look at the sliver key on the side here. You see this? This, If you look at really nice clarinets, the sliver key goes along the length of the rod and then curves up. And this curve allows technicians to slightly tweak it and bend it so it's slightly flexible in the metal itself to aid in fine tuning how open the pad is on the tone hole. Just a little bit really matters for intonation, for clarity, and everything like that. Here, this is really a thick piece of metal that's stamped into a curve with a hole drilled on it. So that the, really the rod can go on it. it, it it's really not flexible at all. I've tried, <laughs> I've tried flexing these before and you actually end up breaking them. So it's not really recommended at all. And the only way you adjust this is by how thick the cork is underneath the key itself or how deep the pad is and set into the cup. But if you also look at the cups real quickly, look at the cups here in the throat key, look at the cup here, the cup here. The cups are flat. They're really flat and they're not kind of conical like you find out on other brands and everything. This is really an identifier summary was saying really how to make something as cheap as possible. You know, maximizing profitability of course, while making it still functional and everything. This is after all a student clarinet. Here's the bell. The bell, if you notice, has no metal ring on the bottom of the bell. This is one way of lowering the cost. Notice the key cups are fairly flat, not really conical. They're domed slightly, but not much at all. The top key here is, of course, flat once again. You know, the pad cup. The nickel's nice and clean though, right? Can't complain about that. See how flat the keys are? Flat the pad cups are? I wanna to get to the lifters here. Where's the lifter picture? Here we go, look over here. So basically these are lifting, these are lifting up the mechanisms. They're not gonna be a pin, pin and socket pulling it up and down. Just simple, easy lifters. And the lifters are perfectly fine. Of course, the trouble is, and students will notice that, is they may use the right finger and hit the key down here. And this key may just kind of like bounce around a little bit. It may not, it doesn't really follow it. That's what the pin is for on other key work is the motion, the keys work into each other. In case you want to change fingers, you can do that easily. And, and the key is in the position it will be at. And you don't have any extra noise of the key may, may be flopping around as you're moving around while playing. There's another picture of it. Th this is really identifiable as a Selmer USA low-end clarinet, a Bundy model, basically, which is what it is. See how there's, there's no way to actually bend this. It's just, it's a straight, thick metal, just kind of manufactured, stamped into a shape, and there's no adjustment to it whatsoever. Basically, just like a student clarinet, which is what it is. 
course, as you saw, it has no identifiers whatsoever, but well, except the mouthpiece says Selmer on it. It's worn out, but it says Golden Tone on it. But a Selmer Bundy clarinet, quite obvious to people that would know it. Anyways, that's really all this was about, was seeing how this identified as a Bundy clarinet and what things differentiate better clarinets by using straight gauge metal and it just being bent versus things soldered onto the rods where you can actually tweak it as a technician. So those are things to look for between a student clarinet and a more advanced, intermediate, or professional clarinet. You'll see these little things all over the place, you know, the lifters on the side keys and stuff like that. All these things are identifiers. This makes it easier to manufacture, higher profitability, you know, student clarinet all day long. Anyways, thank you for listening to my ramblings again. Any questions, comments from down below? If you found this useful, don't forget to give a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share. You got to love the knowledge. Got to love life. Got to love clarinets. We'll see you next time.